Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics. I am super excited to bring you a rare fish, something that is absolutely awesome and a fish that we have had in the fish room now for a while and we've been really excited about it. This is the Volcano Bitterling or the Volcano Barb. Like I said, it's a rare fish, but awesome. Let's take a closer look. Appreciate you being here. So this is the Volcano Bitterling, otherwise known as the Volcano Barb. This is Synrhodius microlepis, and it is an outstanding fish. You're looking at a 40 gallon breeder that houses not only this fish, but some pork chop rasboras, some Congo tetras, some microtinopoma, as well as the dwarf mouth broder, and a couple of really cool plecos as well. As a side note, that male Congo Tetra that is a little rough on the other Congos, we have since removed that fish. Want to give these other fish a break. They were getting chased around a little bit more than I would like, so that tank has calmed down a bit since I filmed this video. Love this tank. Joanna just recently rescaped it. She did a video on her channel, The Small Scape. If you haven't seen that channel, check it out. I will put that in the upper right hand corner. It's in the description below as well. But this is an awesome fish, absolutely full of color and energy as you see. Now there's not a lot of information out here, so I'm really just gonna be sharing with you my experience with this fish over the last nine months. It was a newly described species back in 2017, comes from the Ngazi River in China. Now most of what is out there is basically nothing. It's describing based their location for the most part, maybe a real quick little video, but that's about it. So our experience with this fish, they're gonna be around two and a half inches or so. I think for the most part, they're getting close to being full grown here. By the way, what you're looking at is mostly, if not all, males. The males have this nice red color and that those white lips with the darker, uh, the darker face and the darker dorsal fin. The females stay a lot more silvery. And it just so happens in that batch that we got in with this group, it was pretty much all males. I have another group in our fish room right now with a lot more fish that are silver in color and I suspect there's a ton more females in there. The coloration, again, the males are the ones that really show all that color. Size-wise, they're gonna be pretty similar. One thing to keep in mind with this fish and something that we have experienced is they have a ton of energy. This is a very, very active fish right now. They think just because I'm standing somewhere in the vicinity of the aquarium that they're going to be fed. This is a fish that is extremely food driven and gets very, very active whenever food is in the aquarium. So keep that in mind as you're starting to think about stocking options, the way you're going to set up the aquarium. This is one of the more active fish that we have in the fish room and certainly one of the more active barb type fish that we have ever had. Now, again, these are fairly rare. Because of that, they might be a little bit difficult to find. And when you can find them, at least right now, the making of this video, they're gonna be pretty expensive. I would expect to see retail prices somewhere around the $20, $30 range, maybe going as high as $35, $40 each. That can get expensive very, very quickly because you're gonna to wanna to keep them in a larger group. And in fact, the group that you see here is probably gonna move out of this 40 breeder into a larger tank with a much larger group later on because I think we're getting a little bit too much aggression between them as you'll see with a little bit of the, the uh, ripped up fins here. I think we need a larger group and we're gonna make that happen here relatively soon. Now, lifespan. I'm not gonna comment on that right now because like I said, we've had them for a year. I think when we got them in, they were probably at least six months old because they were a decent size. When you're thinking about tank mates, by the way, if you're looking for awesome fish and tank mates for these fish, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. They are a channel sponsor because they sell awesome fish, they quarantine their fish and do everything they can to make sure that you're getting the healthiest fish in the market. So when I'm thinking about tank mates for these guys, you can see in here, we've got some Congo Tetras. Again, we've got that dwarf mouth brooder in there as well, and the Harlequin Rasbora. I would really stick with fish that are gonna be a little bit more assertive, faster moving, nothing with long fins. I, I suspect these fish would like to nip at other fish that have longer fins. So I think the Congos have worked out fairly well. You could do smaller or even medium sized cichlids. I wouldn't get something that's gonna be so large where these fish could become fish food, but some of your fire mouth types, uh, certainly a pistogramma and your rams, uh, those smaller South Central American cichlids, if you wanna do crebenzis, uh, West African cichlids, that's fine. 
but I, I think this is a fish that would fit in well with some of those South and Central American cichlids that are not too large to eat them. If you want to keep them with other schooling fish, like I said, I think the Congos have worked out okay, but you could also consider other larger type tetras like the Red Eye Tetra, the Buenos Aires Tetra, these fish that are a little bit more assertive. Uh, other types of barbs, I think tiger barbs might be an option or any of the tiger barb types might be an option. The Garami. Now here I'm thinking the Garamis that are a little bit more assertive, like your blues, your golds, your opalines, uh, something that is going to be able to compete with these fish for food and just kind of hold their own. Uh, rainbow sharks, I would probably consider those as well. For our cleanup crew, we are using mostly bristlenose plecos. We do have a blue phantom pleco in this aquarium, but we almost never see them. Uh, some of your loaches might work out just fine. So again, I will put an entire list of fish that I think might be compatible with the Volcano Tetra down in the description below if you want more information there. Now when it comes to water parameters, again, there's not a ton of information out there on the internet. I can just tell you what we have done in our fish room. We've had these fish in a few tanks throughout our fish room and those tanks range in temperature from around 75 up to 80 degrees and they have been thriving in those temperatures. Our pH is closer to an 8 or an 8.2. Again, they have been doing well there. I suspect they can easily go down to neutral, a pH of 7. So to be safe, somewhere around 7 to 8, I think you're going to be just fine. Water hardness, we're at a GH and a cage of around 10 degrees. I would say anywhere between, let's say, 5 and 15 is most likely going to be safe for these fish. Obviously, the big thing is make sure you are you have a well-cycled tank, so no ammonia, no nitrite. If you don't know what a cycle tank means, check out the video in the upper right-hand corner. We go into that in much greater detail. I will tell you now, feeding these fish has been one of the easiest things I've ever done. There have been few fish in our fish room that have been easier to feed than the Volcano Bitterling. They eat everything. It really doesn't matter what you throw in the tank in terms of fish food. Now, we happen to feed all of our fish high-quality food. We feed North Fin foods. So all the North Fin flakes, all the North Fin pellets, they've eaten them all. They actually like live baby brine shrimp. Uh, they will eat frozen brine shrimp, frozen bloodworms. I even think that they're eating duckweed because in the tanks that we have had, we make no effort to remove duckweed for the most part, or at least completely remove it from an aquarium. And so if there is no duckweed in an aquarium, most likely it's because the fish that are eating or the fish that are in that aquarium are eating it in every tank where we've had duckweed, where these fish show up, the duckweed starts to go away. So I cannot say for sure, 100%, I've never actually seen them do it, but I suspect they may be eating some of the duckweed in our aquarium. Now, that's pretty awesome. Again, super easy to feed. They get really, really active around feeding time start thinking about when you have this fish your tank size these are very active fish and even though they're not super large their activity levels really warrant a larger tank i think a 20 long is probably about as small as i would i would go ideally if you had a 29 or like here we've got the 40 breeder i think this is pretty adequate but i i do want to keep these fish in larger groups and right now I don't know, maybe we've got 10 or 12 in this aquarium. I'd like to have closer to 20. And when you've got that many of these fish in that in an aquarium like that, I think a 40 breeder is even a better way to go. But a 20 long, a 29 is probably uh, a minimum. Certainly a five or a 10 gallon is gonna be out. These fish are way too active and way too assertive for a tank that small. When setting up the aquarium, I think Joanna did a great job. Again, if you wanna see that video on the Smallscape YouTube channel, how she set this up, feel free to subscribe over there. But I think she did a great job here. Substrate, it doesn't really matter because they don't interact with the substrate, so it could be gravel or sand. Use your other fish stocking options to determine what kind of substrate you use. And actually for this fish, it doesn't matter if it's light or dark substrate. I found that the males fire up, whether it's a lighter substrate or a darker substrate, they pretty much look the same. We've been using live plants. I haven't noticed them to eat the live plants. They've been in this tank for a while. We'll see. But exercise, just a little bit of caution because, again, I, we don't have a ton of experience with these guys in planted tanks. But it seems like they're leaving the plants alone. Again, could be wrong on that. But we've opted for a planted tank, some rock work, some wood. The big thing here is they're open water fish for the most part. They're, they're not shy at all. So if you're looking for a fish that's going to bring other fish out because maybe they're a little bit shy, this is your fish. I have rarely come across 
a, a barb type or you know or the tetras or schooling fish shoaling fish that are absolutely as personable as these fish are they seem to fear absolutely nothing so this would be a, make a great dither fish for other types of fish that are a little bit more shy Again, the big thing here is make sure you give them plenty of swimming space. They wouldn't mind a little bit of flow as well. We've got sponge filters in this aquarium. That's all we're running, but a little bit of flow wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. Breeding these fish, I'm, normally I talk about breeding. I haven't bred them. What I will most likely do is at some point in the future, if I decide to breed them, I'll put another video out just about breeding the fish. But this is an awesome fish if you can find it. Highly recommend it. Keep them in a, a really big group with some other semi-assertive fish in a decent sized tank and you're gonna have an absolutely stunning collection of these bitterlings. So thank you so much for being here. Again, if you want more information on fish you can keep with these, check out the description below. Appreciate you being here and we will see you next time.